this chain does not go back in the bottle. You are the trailer park. I am the tornado. Okay, I gotta ask you, I love Yellowstone. It's one of my favorite shows. I watch it with my girlfriend every day, uh, whenever we can. And we're, we're two episodes in. We haven't gotten the rest of the screener yet. We don't get it in Canada for some reason, so we're dependent on the studio. One question I have to ask you is, why does Beth hate Jamie so much? I mean, I get it. <laughs> well, um, I mean, there are many layers to that answer. I mean, to be honest with you, there's, uh, she has no respect for him just on a surface layer. layer, layer. I think um, some of the things that he does, I mean, I could list you a bunch of things that Beth would say about Jamie. And he did kill um, the girl last year. <laughs> right, exactly. And, you know, he went to undermine um, their father and what happened what happened last season what he did was you know he's very self-involved it's all about jamie you know what how he comes out looking and what's best for him and beth is the opposite she doesn't want to be there but she puts herself in the position because she's trying to help her father um sort of her loyalty to him knows no bounds so it's almost like if you cross if you do something bad towards her father i think that's when Beth's teeth come out but this is all like very surface the real the stuff underneath the stuff with their history and what has gone on with them you know it just reeks of something much more um traumatic you know yeah. what I mean like it can't just be that she they just it's not this is not sibling rivalry yeah you know so, I mean I Taylor plays with that a little bit especially in season one mm -hmm. but season two we really got into um, you can really feel the tremble of her hatred, you know? So for yeah. me, that, um, that, that really signifies if something else. And so everyone, um, everyone's been asking me, and of course I know because, um, Oh, really? Know. Oh. Of course, because we're in season three, we really, we really explore it. In season oh, really? One, oh, oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So there's lots, of, I've had a lot of theories. A lot of people have kind of- Oh, well, I've got theories. <laughs> Yeah. But if I told you, and I can't actually wait to talk about it and to have discussions about it, because but if I told you, I'd ruin it. So um, I, I still can't um, drop it. But uh, it's um, there. There's a few bunch of things. I mean, he does blame Beth for the death of their mother. Yeah. Um, mother. Um, uh, there's that, which is no small thing. Um, and you know, it's, it's, that's an incredibly painful thing that they both share. Um, but Wes and I, we talk a lot about these characters cause Wes and I get on really, really well. We really, yeah. um, we really care about this relationship and, um, it, we both, understood that there has to have been some sort of like deep love between them you know yeah that's gone now, in order for this betrayal which is gone for this this deep traumatic thing that happened to them in a very de very defining moment in their young life i think uh, i'm not sure where that how that will that healing will take place um, and it's just sort of blowing up in them, you know? And I think in this moment of triage that we find ourselves in in season, the beginning of season three after what happened with the attack and Tate's disappearance, and I think there is, it's the time for Beth, she's in a of recovery rather than attack for a yeah. minute. And being in the sort of comfort of some warmth of love with rip for for a bit that there is it starts to allow itself to come up and that's where we are, that's where we'll sort of start to find out what happens are beth and rip though I'm, I'm 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 hoping that the two of them that the relationship continues to kind of flourish but I'm, i was worried when i saw josh holloway's character because you guys seem to have really good chemistry too like it feels like there's something that could potentially happen there well again i don't want to give away too much but um no, there is no, uh, there is no competition for, for, for Beth's heart at this point. Okay, good to hear. Um, yeah. Also, without getting too pretentious, I've always kind of felt like it was kind of King Learish, the relationship between you and your dad on the show. And do you think that Beth is 
frustrated by the fact that she always has to kind of take a backseat to the sons, to, to her brothers, who are obviously a lot less capable than she is. Because my theory has always been that Beth will be in charge at the end and will be running the show. It seems inevitable and like the way it should be. Um, I like that. I like your thinking. <laughs> I feel the same way. I mean, she clearly is the, the one that's capable, but she yeah. can't go. Her father thinks that she can't be involved in some of the dirty stuff where he has no idea what she's yeah. doing. Um, <laughs> and in season three, it's almost like, are you fucking kidding me? The what she has to do in order to help save the thing that she actually would like to burn to the ground. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then it's sort of what happens is, you know, what's really interesting in season three for me to play Beth was this idea of, I mean, all these characters are struggling with identity, right? So what is their relationship with themselves, with each other, and then this land that they're also bound to and tied to? And I think the more Beth stays there, she sort of starts to have this sort of more metaphysical sort of big wonderings, which is kind of not expected of her. You know, when she starts talking about God is the land and <laughs> have you ever wondered about what was here before? It's almost like she's starting to tap into something, you know, and trying to ask her father, like, you know, should we really be here? I mean, I like that about the show. And the writing is the writing on the show is, is incredible. And I've, I've noticed that Taylor Sheridan has a credit on every script. And it seems like he is kind of the de facto writer's room in some way. Is that a big change for you, though, having done a few shows that it's this one kind of unified vision? Because it feels like that's not really something that happens too much in TV, where it's like a real, like it feels like the work of an auteur to a certain extent. Yeah, I mean, you take it out of Taylor's hands you know it's just not possible I mean he has complete ownership and control over these this world and these characters and it's um it's 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 his voice and I think um I think you're right it's pretty unheard of where you don't have a big writer's room and it's um it doesn't get handed over at some point but he uh he for season three he wrote every script do you think it's somewhat easier yeah, I mean, pretty much every single word is, especially every single word of Beth's is his. Well, sure. it seems to me that that's always been the good thing about kind of cable shows, though, that you can do shorter seasons and they're better and they attract a lot of talent and they attract people to it. So it's nice to see something like Yellowstone kind of run with that, because I, I do love it. I think it's a great show. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it sort of straddles both worlds. You know, when I yeah. watch it, I'm like, gosh, it really has got that Dallas vibe, but then it's sort of super smart and yeah. wild. And it's sort of like a know, sophisticated it's, you know, Dallas. You know where to put it. Huh? Yeah, I guess it's like a sophisticated Dallas kind of, like a more yeah. sophisticated. He'd probably hate this. If he heard me say that, he'd probably really? like, <laughs> yeah. But I, I mean, I, I don't mean it just because of that world, but it, 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 it it's, it's way deeper than that, obviously. And, and yeah. the, 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 the characters are so drawn so beautifully. This is not like, it's it's just it's holding that world but then releasing us into you don't really know what taylor's politics are i read it you no. know or what no. he really feels about all these characters um you know I when like when, when Dutton a, says uh, sorry every every ep episode to episode it kind of changes though like one t sometimes i feel he's one way and then sometimes i feel he's another way yeah he, i love that so, open so am i though. I mean, yeah. yeah, and uh, I think the one thing running through it is um, the love of the land and, mm -hmm. you know, his, you know, passion for the, the, the Native American, um, oh, yeah. you know, uh, history is, and, and, um, and what happened is very prominent in a lot of his work. Um, and so the fact that we get to sort of talk about that as well as, loving these cowboys who talk about this land and we're trying to take it from these money guys but actually we were the ones that stole yeah. this land in the first place there's a karma to that yeah. you know um and this broken family this dying family on this dying piece of land actually this land isn't dying the, the land will be there hopefully from you know ever but we won't I do think that's why people like it, though, because they're they're treated in in a, in a way that like the the viewer is 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 trusted to make up their own mind about these people. They're not spoon fed anything, so right. people can be are sophisticated enough that they could read into it however they want to. That's right. I mean, there's one line in season one that John Dutton says, "This is America. We don't share land," <laughs> and you know you got a lot of 
people going, fuck yeah, that's what we think. And isn't that great? And, uh, and then you just, there's another part of you that I'm not sure that's how it was supposed to no. be taken. I don't know. I imagine there's an om ominous kind of quality with that level of arrogance mm -hmm. that John Dutton as a character, is he or isn't he aware of that level of his humanity? Um, it's interesting. Well, thank you so much for your time. That was great. I, I really can't oh, wait. Is that it? Out. Yeah, I really can't wait to find out what's going on with you and your brother, though. It's kind of driving me crazy. Do you hear that, Laura? We have to wait. <laughs> Give me, what's your guess? Sorry? What's your guess? What do you think, Laura? She's just, my girlfriend is just like shaking her head and <laughs> she won't say. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. I mean, it's, I, I, I don't, I, I, I really, I, 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 I really can't. It's at the core of who she is. It's yeah. the core of who, it's something so palpable, so painful that she would murder him if she could. Really? Like, well, she tells him to kill himself in season two. Uh, yeah. I, I mean, you, tell, you know what I mean? Like there's something uh. <laughs> deep in that. Go on, what does she say? Put Laura on. What do you say, Laura? No, 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 what do you no, say? No, Come no, on, no, no, sorry. No, 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 sorry. <laughs> He's gonna fucking murder you. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll, I'll let I'll end the torture. <laughs> thank, you very, thank you very much for your time, mate. I appreciate it. You're welcome. Thanks so much. Have a great day. I like your Depeche Mode shirt. Oh, thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thanks. Bye. Every road leads right here. Destiny is a hard thing to run from, isn't it? You're all I need. You are truly evil. All I do is kill! There's monsters everywhere in this world.